If you're like me, you probably enjoy a nice coffee in the morning. However, you also might be in a situation like my wife and I in our new house, where you have too many coffee mugs that you're sentimentally attached to, and not enough storage space in your kitchen cabinets. So today I'm going to walk you through, as you can see behind me, how to build a wall rack for displaying your coffee mugs that will get them out of that kitchen cabinet and out on the wall. It also looks nice. So let's get started with the build. So one of the things that has me really excited about this coffee mug wall rack build that we're working on is it's going to be the first in our new series of what we're calling blitz builds over here. So blitz builds are going to be designed to be quicker, easier projects that you can knock out in a day, maybe two, and are going to require fewer tools, fewer specialty items than some of our more traditional and more complex builds. So these are really designed for beginners out there that don't have a lot of tools, you're just getting started in that one and woodworking. These are for you, they should be easy, and hope you enjoy them. This first blitz build that we're doing of the coffee mug rack, really the only tools that you need are a miter saw, some drills, a table saw, and a sander. I'm, I'm going to actually be doing some pocket hole joinery on top of that to hide my my hardware a little bit better, but if you wanted to, you could easily forget the pocket hole joinery and just screw in from the side. But I'll talk that over a little bit more as we get into the build. In sticking with the mindset of blitz builds, this project can be built using only 1x4s for the wood. For the size mug rack I decided to make, you need approximately 18 feet total. Now for the front face and rear boards, there is no need to use the table saw. But for the side pieces, I chose to rip them down to 3 inches in width. This will give the coffee mug rack a little bit of depth off the wall, but not make it protrude too much. With the sides ripped, it was time to move over to the miter saw and cut all of my pieces to length. If you are interested in building your own coffee mug rack to match mine exactly, then check the description for the lengths of all the pieces. Once everything was cut down to size, it was time to prepare for assembly. This is where I chose to use pocket holes on all the front and rear boards. Using pocket holes allowed me to hide all of the screws on the back side of the board so that no hardware was visible. If you do not have a pocket hole jig, don't worry. You can just as easily join the boards together drilling inwards from the side pieces. However, building the coffee mug rack this way will cause the screws to be visible from the sides. I started my assembly by attaching all the front face boards to both side pieces. To ensure I got proper spacing between all three front boards, I screwed the first board into place and then used my two back pieces as spacers between the other two front boards. Once the front boards were all installed, I used a tape measure to mark the back side of the side pieces where my two back pieces should be installed to offset the front boards. I then screwed them into place. A handy tip when trying to do this is to cut a spacer board to slide in between the front and the back face pieces to ensure that your pieces are flush with the sides. With the assembly complete, before I progressed into finishing the piece, I pre-drilled two mounting holes for the rack. Ultimately, when mounting a piece to the wall, drilling directly into your studs is going to be the most secure method. However, in certain cases you may not want to do that, and I will go over the alternative method I used in this build later on. Now the next step you'll see me take is a purely aesthetic one. It is not necessary and is something I recommend you try when you are comfortable and ready. I personally decided I wanted a little more contrast in the wood grain of my piece. This is something that is common when working with pine. You will sometimes find that wood stain alone is, does not give you the varying grain pattern you might want. In this case, I chose to char my piece using a blowtorch. A nice light charring across the entire piece will really make the wood grain pop. When it came to finishing the rack, I chose to use a Minwax Dark Walnut Wood Stain to get the color I was looking for, and then a Minwax Satin Finish Polyurethane Varnish to protect the wood from any dings and scratches. I applied the stain using a shop rag to wipe it on, 
and for the varnish I brushed it on using four coats with a sponge brush. So with our piece now stained and varnished, it's time to mount our hooks for our mugs and everything. You don't want to mount those before the stain and varnish because you don't want to get stain and varnish obviously on metal pieces. I chose to go with these antique bronze hooks that I just picked up on Amazon. They were about 15 bucks I believe for a 20 pack and I'm only going to need 17 on this rack. So what I've decided on for spacing, I'm going to go on the top and bottom rows. They're going to be mirror images of each other. I'm going to go three inches in and then a six inch spacing between each hook uh, to offset the middle row so it doesn't look the exact same the whole way and the mugs don't risk running into each other. I'm actually going to do those six inches on the side and then just continue six inches all the way across. So the middle row will have one less hook than the top and bottom rows. As I said before, the top and bottom rows of the rack will be identical and the middle row will be offset by 3 inches. There's a 6 inch gap between each of the hooks. I chose this distance based off of measuring the largest coffee mug that was going to be on the rack and ensuring that it would not bump into any mug around it. I mounted my hooks halfway down on the face boards so that when the mugs are hanging, the body of the mug rests in the gap between my face boards. With my layout planned, I went to work drilling and screwing in each of my hooks. In certain situations, such as this, where I wanted my bolt holes mounting into the wall to be in a sp specific location where they'd be kind of hidden behind mugs when I hug mugs on it, and they would be symmetrical on the piece, not necessarily symmetrical in locations on the wall, since studs are typically about 16 inches apart. So the next best, best method that I know of is using what they call snap toggles or toggle bolts. Essentially, this bolt, you drill, mark your locations in the wall, drill a hole, you drill a half inch hole into the wall, quarter inch for these ones that I got into the piece. You slide this piece in, and then when you pull it back out, it gets flat, flush up against the wall, and then you tighten this bit down on it, and you break off the excess plastic, and you've got a very strong hold on these things. I believe each of these is rated between 125 to 150 pounds on drywall. So more than enough than what we'll need just to support some mugs.